the gospel of our Lord, for sure. Our text for this sermon is from the Holy Gospel, which we've just sung, and also from the Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. He speaks of this dichotomy between those that don't do God's will, as the psalmist said, and those that do. And it's not that our works that save us, it's God's grace. But still, it's good to hear. Blessed is the person, the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out his, its roots in the stream. By the stream, it does not fear when heat comes. It, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. So far, our text. We are seated. We pray, gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you, be to us all. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our world tends to judge things in a very easy and straightforward way, or at least figures that it does. And so, say, blessed is the one to whom nothing bad happens, who attains the desires of their heart, to whom life is good, who doesn't struggle to make ends meet who has a comfortable place to live and who others look up to and want to emulate or to be like. Not necessarily rich, but comfortable. Not necessarily religious, however that would be put, but altruistic, having wanting the best for others. And the opposite then is true, if we were to go that way. Woe is the person to whom bad things happen for whom life is a struggle, for whom the desires of the heart remain far away, who's always pining, wanting, but never getting, who is heaped with one misfortune after another, who is burdened with sadness and looked upon with pity, who no one wants to be like. But it's not just the world that thinks this way. We do too, as God's people in Christ. For even as I was speaking those words and describing people, I'm sure that we all formed a mental picture in our mind of who I was talking about. We can think of people who are that way, of who is blessed, and of who life is really the pits. We think we know. We think we can judge such things, or at least we try to. Well, today Jesus reminds us and says, not so fast. Or how does the old saying go? Don't judge a book by its cover. There might be a raggy cover, but it's what's inside that counts. Or a person. Don't judge a person by how a person looks. A person who looks really great on the outside might be totally shallow on the inside. For blessings and woes may not be what we or the world would think they are. So actually, our world sometimes figures this out, or figures it, figures it out, even if it's just for a short time. Like when those who think we, uh, who we think are so richly blessed commit suicide or spend their lives in an unending quest for something that they cannot obtain or are involved in incredible drug addiction or alcohol or any other kind of addiction the myriad ones and even more or when uh, those who should be sitting in the dust would say are and saying woe is me actually consider themselves blessed like some of the victims of our latest cold spell or those who have lost everything in a fire or a person at home or in a hospital battling disease would say I'm still blessed at such moments, we realize that blessings and woe is more than skin deep. It's more than what we see on the outside. It's more than even what we think. Events such as these that don't seem to make or fit our worldview cause us to reevaluate which is good and which is Jesus' words for us today. He would say, think again. Reorient, reevaluate, rethink. Where is your life? 
Where are you going and why? It's interesting to think about the scene that day in Galilee as Jews and Greeks alike had come to hear Jesus and to be healed by him. Jesus lifts up his eyes and sees people of all kinds and conditions and places of life, and he speaks of blessings and woes. But who is blessed and to who is woe happening? Careful again if we think that we know. Were the poor and the hungry and the sad now blessed because they had been healed? Or was Jesus now warning them of the woes that often come to those who think they are blessed? And what about those to whom the woes applied that were having a terrible time in life? Were they all of the people who were most pitied? as was read in our second reading from 1 Corinthians 15, 19, or perhaps because they had come to hear Jesus. Did they turn to him and receive a blessing? Today, a world would say those that go to church need a crutch, a Christian church or a Lutheran church need a crutch. But what a blessing it is when I came to see so many people in Bible study. Thanks be to God that we hear God's word, we learn, carrying on, learning God's word, and that we're at Jesus' feet, as it were, hearing his word again and coming to re-examine our lives. So who are the poor and the hungry and the sad now? Was Jesus warning them of the woes that were to come? And what about those who the woes came to? Were they to be pitied? Or perhaps because they came to hear Jesus, did they turn to him and receive a blessing, as I mentioned earlier, recognizing their need, their true poverty, or the life they had spent in a huge amount of energy looking and stretching and straining to try to get something that they couldn't obtain. So don't judge a book by its cover. And don't judge our life by its cover either. The prophet Jeremiah helps us to understand this. Jesus had the words of Jeremiah that we heard today in his heart, knew them well when he spoke to the crowd in Galilee that day. He knew his Old Testament very well. He spoke it through the prophets after all and was quite fun. He quoted often the Old Testament. So what does Jeremiah say of blessings and woes? It is, as I said earlier, cursed is the man who trusts in man, mankind, makes flesh his strength, whose head turns away from the Lord. So he's not saying don't do calisthenics, don't do bodybuilding. No, if you're doing bodybuilding, know the Lord also. Because otherwise your body is worth nothing. There's a book that I'm reading. It's uh, God in Russia. If you ever get a chance to read it, it's a Roman Catholic priest. And he really wants, he feels that Russia, and this is during the Second World War, was like sheep without a shepherd. What a horrible situation he went through. And in effect, the KGB was after him all the time. Churches like this were turned into radio stations. Uh, and he had, did mass, did church in houses, and of course he was arrested, and it was horrible. But what he said is so important, is that to trust in the Lord, when he had no friends, he had a true friend still. And it is, as we know, what a friend we have in Jesus. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. Or perhaps we could paraphrase it like this. Blessed is the one, blessed are you, whose faith lies, and me, lies not in what has happened to us, to him, to her, but in what happened to Christ. For such faith is neither captivated nor distressed by the things of this world, but focused on the cross of Christ. Yeah. And of what happened to our Savior there. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus took our wounds, our troubles. Yeah. So long and short, there's a sermon going on, but the book that I'm reading is the, the long and short of the person, Shiz, uh, Shizek, uh, Walter Shizek. He, he did get out of the Soviet Union in 1963 through diplomatic processes and, and uh, uh, w flew to uh, Idlewild Airport, which is J.F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. And... Uh, 
uh, John F. Kennedy and uh, uh, his brother, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, was able to uh, make a trade, and it was about a month after uh, after Shazak came back that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. It's an amazing story of how a Christian trusting in the Lord, and we too are blessed who trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one whose faith lies not in what happens to us, but what happened to Christ. Such as faith is like Jeremiah's tree planted by streams of water that come at times of green and plenty when life is good, or times of desert and, and without anything when each breath of life is a struggle and strain. So in good times and bad times in Christ, we have our Redeemer, Jesus, who walks with us. The unseen but deep roots of faith, as Carol mentioned for the, Carolyn from the piano, said, so dig your roots deep, connected to Christ, strengthen us and sustain us. Such is a person, boys and girls and moms and dads, men and women, we are truly blessed when we sink our roots deep in God's word through what is seen and on the surface may seem exactly the opposite. It might seem like we're withering on the surface, our body fails us, and yet our roots are deep and on the so connected and onto the solid rock. And we have been so blessed as Grace Lutheran Church, as Christians in Camrose, as a country, as a province, really, we're going through big troubles, but it could be way, way worse. We have freedom, freedom to come to church, freedom to, to have God's word shared, whether it's me or David or other people around the sacrament, to hear God's word read, read without having to fear of being placed in jail or put in a, in a camp, a political, being a political uh, a criminal. And so we are blessed. Remember, we don't judge a book by its cover. We don't judge our faith by how it feels, hopefully, or what we think or about it, or what other people think it might and should be. We don't trust what we can or cannot do or what we have or haven't done. We are blessed when we trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, in what God has done and continues to do through you and through me. Each of us are unique. I can't do what God has called you to do. You can't do what God has called me to do. The Lord who created us, who redeemed us, continues to clean us up, sanctifies us over and over again. The Lord who became man entered this wilderness of sin for you, for me, that in his resurrection, he would render death powerless. And we still go through the valley of the shadow of death. And yet God says, fear not, for I am with you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, even though others will assault you with words and even physically know that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in every trouble. The Lord who didn't pull us up by the roots and throw us into the fire because of our sin that we deserved, but who puts out the flames through the waters of holy baptism, his water which gives us faith that we need for this life, and not faith in some worldly thing, but faith in the one true God who created us, who loves us with an everlasting love. And that endures both blessings and woes in life. And so we are blessed. Blessed are you is a statement of faith, not of sight, and therefore a statement of the cross, a statement that cannot be proven or deduced but it can only be believed through faith. But that doesn't make it weak or uncertain, but in fact, exactly the opposite. That's what makes it so sure, because it's rooted and ground not in anything of this world. It's played out in this world, but it's rooted in Christ, in his suffering and his death and his resurrection the death and resurrection of Christ that has reconciled us to God the Father and God the Father to us. 
the death and resurrection of Christ that has given us new life and has provided all that we need and still continues to provide us with everything that we need and encouragement to go on. And so, yes, blessed are you who are poor with nothing to hold on to but Christ, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are weary and weeping and sad in repentance, for you shall laugh in joy, in joy of forgiveness forever. And blessed are you when people even hate you and exclude you and revile you, throw you in prison on account of Jesus, for they will see Christ in you. And that's what this guy that I'm reading the book about, he, wherever he was in whatever prison camp, people came up to him. Something was different about him. And he had many opportunities, even in house churches in, uh, in the middle of the uh, Siberian wilderness, where people came to church. They sought him out. They knew God's word. They treasured their baptism into Christ. They're Roman Catholic Christians, but they're Eastern Orthodox and they're Baptists and there were Lutheran Christians also. A lot of people there from Lithuania and Ukraine and Estonia and Poland and the odd German that was taken captive. So blessed are you when people hate you, exclude you, revile you, for they see Christ in you. Christ is our life and our salvation. Christ is our forgiveness and love. Christ, the first fruits of the dead. Christ, the tree of life as we sang. The door, the way, who gives us life and, and gives life through us to others. Even the quilts on the front of uh, the pew is that they're not just there to, to be put on a shelf, but they're to be used to give life and warmth to others or to insulate so warmth stays in people. Christ, the tree of life, gives life to us trees that we may live and produce fruit, fruit that abounds. The fruits of faith and good works, in season and out of season, in plenty and in drought, not relying upon what we see, because some would say, well, that's not good enough. But we rely on God saying, my grace is sufficient for you. We trust that God's word as we speak it, as we share it, it is true. It accomplishes that which it is sent out for. So his word, God's word, which says to you and to me and to all people, blessed are you. And so it is true that we are blessed. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus, both now and to life everlasting. Amen.